Hey everybody, so today we're actually going to talk about um, sprinkler compressors uh, for deluge systems, dry systems, pre-action systems. Uh, we've actually been having a lot of problems with, uh, with our uh, deluge system compressor uh, and come to find out, you know, we've got a deluge system for our cooling towers and we've been in this, uh, this spot before, you know, you guys have, I think all seen this, but, um, and we are in the process, we're trying to get rid of our cooling towers and get, get newer ones, which wouldn't require a deluge sprinkler system, but our old wooden cooling towers have them. Um, and part of that is it's a very corrosive environment, so we're constantly getting uh, pinhole leaks, uh, having to go out there and repair them, and that puts a lot of, uh, those leaks put a lot of taxation on the compressor. Uh, and we've had to replace this compressor here, uh, not this one specifically, but we've had to replace it four times in the last 18 months. So. Um, we've actually taken a, uh, um, a uh, reliability-centered maintenance strategy, is, is what it's called, and I'll post a link if you guys don't know what that is, but um, this last time, um, we actually ended up putting an asset tag on it, we have a PM that comes out every month now. We are tracking how frequently the compressor is running. We use a volt, volt meter um, for logging, a, uh, logging the voltage and uh, track once a month for a six-hour time period how often the compressor runs and how long it runs for. Um, so that way we're not uh, overloading the compressor. These compressors, uh, even if you have them uh, mounted on your you know, a riser mount compressor or whatever, they're, they're not rated to run 24 seven, right? I mean, they've got, a set, they've got set limitations when they overheat, they shut down, whatever. Well, especially if you're working in a corrosive environment um, or an air, somewhere that's gonna get susceptible to a lot of leaks pinhole leaks from, from an air perspective and you don't have uh, the time or money or ability to replace the entire system, you gotta come up with, you gotta be, uh, come up with how, how do you solve the issue, right? So every month we actually track, we've got a baseline, uh, and I wish code was a little bit more prescriptive on this, how often can a compressor really run? Um, it's not it's not really in there, right? There's there's calculations for air and, and allowable leakage and things like that, but it's, it's, it's not that clear, it's not cut and dry. So we established a baseline. Uh, we, we repaired everything, got all, found all the leaks. Uh, we actually converted our, we've got an air uh, pilot line. Uh, we converted that over, found the leaks, uh, converted from air to water and found those leaks, repaired those first. Um, and then we, once repaired, we established how often this thing's gonna run. So we found out that in, during a six, year, six hour time frame, every 26 minutes it runs for an average of about 36 seconds, right? So we established that baseline. We said, okay, from this point forward, that's our baseline. Anything, anything that exceeds that by about a 10% threshold, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna have a, our sprinkler company come out, we're gonna find those leaks, get them prepared. That way we're not taxing this asset, right? So uh, that's really critical. And all of this is now tracked in our CMMS system. Uh, so facilities managers, you know, think about that. We now have all that data and we're able to, to correlate it back to a single asset. Um, so we're not having to constantly worry about it. Uh, we're also not having to worry about all the low air, uh, low air sensors. So if you have issues with your dry pre-action or dilute systems leaking, uh, pinhole leaks, if you're having issues with a lot of low air signals, uh, consider this kind of strategy where you either do a, a pressure monitor or you do an electrical monitor and you do it at a set frequency. So establish that baseline um, and then from there, uh, you know when you need to repair it. So take that uh, kind of proactive, that uh, reliability-centered maintenance approach. So, uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. Happy learning.